sections of the ordinance, 405 and 406. So. Yes, but you're taking away one of the three acres from that 20-acre parcel. I understand that. So that, that, that has to be subdivided away from that. No, it doesn't. If you look at section 405 and 406, uh, it, it doesn't have to be. Okay, because well, it's being combined with another lot. I understand. And then and the other one, the 0.05, isn't a substandard? Everything's being added to an existing lot. It's, it's not standing by its own. Okay, and on the bills. Uh, on the permit list, Reaper's Revenge, the haunted house. Is that an expansion of that business over there? Yes. <clears throat> The pole barn, basically, I guess. Anything else? Oh, I didn't hear you. I, uh, Carl said yes, it's a pole barn that's going on. All right, I know, but is, is, do they have to get come back and get uh, I, I, approval it's already, for expansion? No, it's already been approved there. It's you know, like if you're putting a, a garage or a shed in your property that's already approved for a house. No different. Uh, on the bill list, page five, you had a refund to a state account of $38,000. Uh, it's got down to your supervisor's $299. Could you give me more detail on that? Yeah, I believe the, you know, every year they, they, uh, um, they do a, uh, an audit of the liquid fuel funds uh, that we get from the state. And uh, they determined that uh, there was too much spent on stone uh, 
and, and we didn't have it advertised, so what we have to do is shift funds from the general fund into the state fund. We'll still use it, but we just have to shift the funds. So then one, account, one account to the other account. Okay, so then on the uh, state fund, page one, the uh, liquid fuels for 195829 is that coincide with what you just said? I don't know if that's in there. Uh, probably not because we didn't approve it yet until tonight. Uh, probably the next next month meeting would show that thirty eight thousand into the state fund. Well, no, okay. Then what is what is this uh, one ninety five one hundred ninety five thousand? That was this year's allocation came in one hundred twenty uh, three some thousand dollars came in, and we did put the, the thirty eight thousand back in because it had to be done by April thirtieth or something. Um, but it's not listed here. Uh, it probably is because our approval is one hundred and eighty thousand dollars so we've been spending money out of it so all right <clears throat> uh, it's in there already it's in where it's in the 195 the 38 yes well how would anybody know that if they didn't ask questions shouldn't it be should it be posted separately yeah I, I would think it should have been listed as a as a deposit but would be easier to follow. It would be a bit. Okay, the rest are not on the agenda. Uh, anything else, Rose? No, the other ones are for, they're not agenda items. Okay. Bill? Oh, don't worry, Mike, I got a list. That's all right. I know. We have all night. Have you had a pizza? Uh, I ate before I got here. So. <laughs> uh, Bill? Good evening. I don't see the um, Colmar <coughs> conditional use violations or alleged violations listed on the agenda. At what point during the meeting will we speak about those? Um, why don't we wait until the solicitor's report, we'll get through all the other business, and then that'll basically be the, the last main thing we'll talk about. Okay, I'll hold my uh, comments. I'll hold my comment, General. I mean, I, it, it, that doesn't matter to me. But either when we get down the solicitor report, but, um, let, let's do a solicitor report. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, we need a motion to approve the minutes from April 18 of 2023. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Zoning. The first uh, matter is the Hoyne Act uh, lot combination. Carl, do you want to address that? Yeah. So we did this uh, three, four years ago, maybe. Um, it's down on, on the labor um, on Lakeside Drive. It's three lots. We just divide them into one. Um, we had approved it, and then he put his house on hold, I think. And so this never got filed. Now he's, now he's going to build the house. So it's these these three lots will be combined into one lot. Next video, how long will you do Probably three years ago, three, three years ago, but it never got filed, but it never needs to file it, so we start it over.
pretty detailed explanation given last month. I mean, is there anything, there's nothing to add other than this is a lot line change pursuant to our ordinance. It involves the lands of John and Mary Krissa, Harlan, Suzanne Ferraro, and the lands that are now owned by ECA. There were several uh, encroachments throughout all the properties that were later found once the survey was done um, that uh, has now been uh, straightened out. Um, for our own, we are getting the 3.93 um, acres that they are under contract to purchase uh, from ECA at market price. See the area. Uh, the, uh, it's going to be a total of 5.16 acres, one lot. Um, and the applicable language in the ordinance is section 405 of the zoning ordinance, lot line change. Whenever the application is only for a change in lot lines, which will not create additional lots, it's, that's what applies. We're not creating any more lots. We're just taking acreage and adding it to the Ferraro property and, and a little bit of acreage and adding it to Crystal. So we still have those three lots and we don't have additional lots being created. Uh, Ryan, any questions? Well, I, uh, I do my own research on it and uh, talk to three different individuals and all came up with the same answer that they were offered at the same lot. Cracks in here. Carl did inform me today that Black Magic is going to start cracks in and start up by the lakeside. The police taking care of on school side rather. We'll get them taken care of. Uh, road crew has been busy the last month with cleaning up, spring cleanup, and immediately the next day we started grading roads. Tonight we'll be spreading our first oil. Uh, we've got a tanker and a distributor there tonight. They'll start at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll spread Mostowski and Ball, Golden, Doris Street, uh, Peaceful Valley, Silver Maple, and if we have any well, we'll go on to uh, Stone Road and Grabowski Road. If not, we'll get them Thursday night. we got a load coming for Thursday. And uh, got a little trouble with our roller, but that's up and running now. Uh, gives a little problems again today with overheating, but right now it's running. So we'll take wow. care of that. And uh, tomorrow we'll be grading, finishing <laughs> up on uh, Lake Road, Biarski, then we'll move into Hopper, Matichak, and Taylor. And then we'll move on to Snyder, Yankovich, and we'll finish up here probably next week if the weather stays the way it's staying. Next week or the beginning of the following week. Okay. We'll have them all. The ones that has to be graded and oiled will be all done, except for the reservoir and Bushwell Hill. And there, there's nobody living on any, either one of them, so they'll be the last roads that we're really concerned with. How much? I know it's, it's dusty out there. Yeah, it's, it's very out. dusty. Very yeah, dusty. Tomorrow. Chance of rain on Wednesday, so. If we get a little shower, it'll keep it down for a little bit. It's it's hard on us as it is on the residents because, you know, our equipment's sucking up that dust as well as everybody else's, you know. Will the oil, uh, will the rain help the oil set better? Yeah, yeah, it does. But you can't just wait for rain because we don't have rain for a month. Yeah. We'll probably all be shot. But. Um, I know uh, Tina Silvanas had asked me about growth. We'll be up there sealing cracks also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I know Mike had the car, but I, I just don't think it was a schedule of what road. You just started school site and worked your way across. I just want to start up there. Okay, that makes sense. All right, uh, anything to say? Nope. Uh, park and recreation. Uh, Brian, do you have anything? Planning Commission. Uh, a report attached? No. And the zoning officer's report is attached. Uh, we'll move on to administrative reports. The financial reports are attached, as uh, are the bills, uh, supervisor reports. Uh, I don't have anything in particular. Uh, Brian, do you have anything? Uh, just at the road clue, or one of the guys, we went out and did some mulching and weeding out in front of the building here today, just to try to get everything ready for the uh, memorial on Saturday. He's going to work on the lower end tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to do that. Brian, could you speak up, please? We worked on the mulch outside today, uh, weeding and mulching and getting the front of the building all cleaned up. We blew it, swept it up, got all the antiques, get out of the parking lots. And then we're going to work on the other end tomorrow, spread some mulch and weed it and get everything uh, ready for the memorial on Saturday. Yeah, they did a good job. I, I was going to wait and bring it up later on. This whoever did it did a good job. They worked hard on it today. Oh, I forgot. I, I forgot to mention. Uh, we do have a, an electronics recycling coming up next Wednesday. It's 4:30 to 6:30. 3:30 to 5:30. 3:30 to 5:30. Uh, it's only on that one day. You don't need a permit ahead of time. It's an outside vendor that's coming in. You'll pay them directly. There are a lot of items that are free: computers, laptops, cables, cell phones. Uh, if you have an old TV, one of those with a nice wooden cabinet. They'll take them, but there is a fee for that. And I, I forget. It depends on the size. So uh, if you have any of that stuff, this is an opportunity to get rid of it because they're very difficult to dispose of. And uh, we, we did have our, our township cleanup. Very successful. Um, and uh, we're, keeping the, uh, we're keeping the recycling down at the new garage. Uh, it's, it's working out much better down there. And we're able to have two things going on at the same time with the cleanup of the municipal park, and then we did the uh, uh, the normal two-week recycling down at the down at the new municipal garage, the drive-through. So that worked out nice, and everyone's out of the weather, whether it's the sun or, uh, or rain or snow. So we're going to keep it down there permanently, and uh, they'll be oiling uh, that road going Tonight. down to the new garage. Tonight. Okay. So uh, people complain about the dust and. Uh, going down, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, that'll be oil going down to the garage. I think that's all I have. Uh, Just so you know, Mike, we don't start until 9 o'clock. That's when we go out and start spreading the oil, okay. 9 o'clock. We'll probably finish around midnight tonight, but uh, it works out better than cars driving over as soon as you put it down. Because I, canceled, I canceled all the ball games for tomorrow night in that park. So this way, all the softball, the girls' softball, and the baseball will be all canceled tomorrow. So it'll at least give it another 24 hours to cure. Yeah, let it set up, and then especially if you have some rain on it, yeah, it so it'll really at least make that'll it set. stay a little bit longer than right. usual. Because usually, what happens when we have the game that day and it's gone, as soon as we put it down. Yeah. For the cleanup this year, there was about about 30 more. 40 more tickets sold than normal than last year, um, and with all the, with the building and the scrap credit that we got, it probably ended up costing us maybe about fourteen hundred dollars. Total? Yeah. Well, I mean, over and above what we took it in, <coughs> so but not the general fund, but that's that's not right. Yeah, no. Considering you were picking that stuff up for yeah, because we don't have the cleanup, then people are throwing their junk. We got some on Stone Road on now. The roads. It's down over the bank. I seen it today, and I was rolling that road in because I have pie, so I can see down. And there's a, a mattress down there and a patio heater. I know Nostowski is usually a favorite. Yeah, it's always a favorite. Brian caught somebody dumping uh, one time, two times on, on Nostowski. I don't know why. I mean, you've got the park right there. It's not like it's isolated. But uh, no, that, that you, you have to have the cleanup, or you end up with everyone's junk thrown on the side of the roads. 
of some of these deals. All right, uh, solicitor's report. Rick, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so on May 14th, the uh, bids, uh, third time around for the township garage, were uh, opened. And uh, I'm happy to report we have a, a winner this time. Attorney Joan Glory and her husband Al were the successful bidders with a bid of $172,100. Um, they have, they did submit the, you know, all the required uh, requirements pursuant to the specs, including the $10,000 deposit check. And it would be my recommendation to approve that bid and to authorize the entry of the township into the agreement of sale that was part of the bid package. Attorney right. Rory actually forwarded me uh, her, you know, her, up, the agreement as, as updated with the terms contained in it. Right. Today. What you feel? Hmm. I would have liked to get a little bit more, but more? you always do, right? I was hoping for 500, but. Yeah. What do you always do? But, you know, it's a business down there. 172,000 help us out a lot with our new garage now. Yeah, I think uh, once we get the proceeds of the sale of the, of the old garage, the, the new garage we have will probably cost us about 177. Right. Uh, and it's probably worth a $500,000 garage because of all the work Brian put in uh, working on it. Uh, well, for example, Mayfield, Put up a garage down there. They only have the shell up for 177, okay. without anything inside of it. So, um, so yeah. I, I'll, I'll agree to that sale. Just to, we did receive three total bids. What, what were they? Uh, 131, uh, uh, 151, 160, 160,000, 178 dollars, and the winning bid of 172. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Um, then we'll move on to the, uh, the process technologies issue. Um, so we can address that. Um, I know last month, uh, Bill Novak and Tom and, uh, they complained about. Uh, Mike, could you speak up or use the mic? I don't think it's on. I'll put it on. You know, and I'm up here, it sounds loud to me, but... All right, uh, last month, uh, <coughs> Bill Novak had uh, made a presentation to the board and submitted various uh, documents and photographs uh, on what he thought were violations that were going on uh, to the conditional use uh, that was granted by the board for process technologies. And uh, so this past month, I know Carl and... Rick have uh, investigated the, the various uh, allegations, and, uh, and so they have a report for us on that, and they've gathered up some documents. Uh, there was a, a, a violation uh, by the contractor up there uh, draining uh, muddy water uh, off of the site down on Tacoma Road, and uh, the soil cons Lackawanna County Soil Conservation District came they did an inspection. I was there. I was out with them. Uh, and it looks like they had a, a, and I don't think it was a permanent retention pond, but it was a, like a low area filled with water. And they deliberately dug a ditch and just drained the water to the back end of the property and ran the muddy water out into the road and then made its way down the road into a, the, uh, the wetland and there's a pond down there. So I, I think uh, they got a, some type of a, a violation notice from DEP or um, uh, the Soil Conservation District regarding that incident, and that wasn't discussed at the last meeting. And that, that was the contract. So uh, at this time, uh, I would uh, I, I would let Bill uh, just initially make his points, and then just to refresh everybody's memory as to what what your points were, and then we can address them. Okay, um, so I have poster boards here with before and after pictures regarding the alleged tree line violation. Set these up. 
this is the best place. I also brought a new book too, but I don't want to touch the I didn't know you this way. All right, so the main violation that I see after I receive, after my conditional use um, right to know items were returned was the conditional use item specifically addressing the tree line that borders our property. The entire length of our 67 acres that borders uh, Colmar's property um, shares a border with Colmar. Um, the whole length, and there's a tree line that divides the property on the, to their half and our half. One of the conditional use items um, from December 2018, when they were granted the conditional use, was landscape buffers to be provided around property and existing tree lines to be preserved as existing on the east side below retention basin and to be further addressed in the land development plans. This is the tree line. Um, 220 feet of the tree line have been absolutely erased, gone. We're talking about mature trees at least 15 to 20 feet tall. Uh, the picture on the left was taken in December, or was taken in the summer of uh, 2018. You know it's the summer of 2018 because you can see the PPL uh, rebuild activity um, in the back in the background. They rebuilt their power lines uh, last summer. You can clearly see their trucks. Um, they're very large uh, bucket trucks, and you can see the trees in the foreground. The trees are much taller than those large bucket trucks. Um, that first 220 feet was completely cut down. Uh, tree line began here, um, right at the edge of the PPL right away, and extended um, out to the north, dividing the property. Same pictures, well, same, same point of view um, with this picture, except it was taken last week. You can see the right away with the PPL power lines, and the first 220 feet of the tree line completely erased. I do have pink markers up on the board. That's where my hunting tree stand is. Um, the reason I put those markers on there is for you know everybody to have a reference of you know this is that specific point um, in in the tree line, so you can reference the two pictures, so so you know where you're at. Um, so you can see just about up until that up until until that that tree stand, the tree line's been completely destroyed. In addition to that, um, the rest of the tree line as it extends to the north has been significantly thinned out. Um, there's not as much girth and there is um, a significant decrease in the screening ability of that buffer in terms of noise, um, light, and sound. Um, another big reason why we wanted that tree line to remain intact is to protect us from noise and uh, dust emissions during the excavation phase. And we're getting hammered with noise and dust, obviously, while the excavation continues. I brought this up seven weeks ago, um, the day that they cut the trees down. Um, that was back in April, April 4th of this year. And it's been seven weeks, and still I don't think any action has been taken against SECO uh, slash Colmar. Um, clearly, the conditional use item states that tree line was to be preserved as existing. And anybody looking at that picture, it, it's an objective fact that that tree line is no longer preserved as it existing, as it existed. You know, we're not talking about shrubs being removed. We're not talking about dead trees being cut down. Healthy, mature trees were raised right down to the ground. And in addition, they ran a backhoe on their side of the tree line that literally ran right up to the property line and cut four feet into the ground, um, destroying all the roots. Now, trees won't really show symptoms of uh, terminal root damage um, for months, maybe up to a year after the damage occurred. So we could potentially lose even more trees, um, which was our, our valuable screen buffer um, between us and the development. Um, if they were to plant trees, um, you know, to uh, come up to code with their conditional use, they wouldn't be able to plant um, much because the drainage ditch is right up against on top of the property line. Um, big rocks, about you know, one foot in diameter. Um, 
are where that, that drainage ditch is. It's about four feet deep, about 10 feet wide. You can't plant trees there. Immediately behind the drainage ditch um, begins the drainage basins. You can't plant trees there. Behind the drainage basins is where their parking lot, loading dock, and facility are going to be. You can't plant trees in the middle of a loading dock or in a parking lot. So I basically <coughs> want to know um, how come they haven't been cited yet? Um, how come their permit hasn't been pulled? They're in clear violation of their conditional use. And um, you know, after acknowledging that they're, they're in violation of their conditional use, uh, what is the township going to do moving forward um, to enforce a remedy to the situation that provides us with the same screening buffer as that original tree line provided that was promised to us to stay intact? Uh, and the, uh, Bill, there were some other items. Uh, the traffic, the traffic study, and uh, the noise with the fans. I guess. Sure. They. I could. You can address. So I, I did receive my right to know request, um, and and thank you, gentlemen, for providing that to me. I did receive a traffic study. It's an official traffic study done by Riley, the developer. Um, for, for Pol Polmar, they're, they're running this development, and it, it stated that as per their analysis, um, and it wasn't just Polmar being taken into consideration, it's the whole technology park being taken into consideration. So as per their analysis, um, they don't believe that there should be any additional um, traffic lights or additional lanes on 632. However, I haven't seen the highway occupancy permit yet, and that is what the um, the golden ticket, you know, for lack of a better term, would be for them to to be able to finally connect to the highway. So, you know, I still have to see what the final say is from Penda um, with that highway occupancy permit. Um, in addition, uh, speaking about the fans, I did receive an invoice in my right to know request that stated silencers were purchased to be placed on the uh, ventilation fans on the side of the building, which is right at the top of our property line. It does generate a lot of noise. However, I, I don't believe now with the evidence that it is over the day-night average, um, especially since they installed the silencers. However, I don't think the silencers address the dust issue at, as well. I don't think the dust issue has been addressed. Um, I didn't see any purchase of filters or any type of air filtration system um, that would cut down on the dust emissions from those fans. The top of the roof of the building is still completely stained with um, tan makeup powder, and there's still makeup powder residue on our, our property, on our garage, um, which is also close to the property line, um, and on, on my family's vehicles. So, you know, I'm glad that they did install the silencers, which, which cut down on the noise. Um, you know, that, that's definitely what the conditional use asked for, so, so I, I thank them for that. But I don't see anything being addressed regarding the dust emissions. All right. Um, anything further? Not right. All right. Uh, with that said, then I let Rick uh, and, and or Carl address uh, the points. It looks like the main issue is, is the, uh, the buffer and uh, trees. Uh, but Rick, you, right, you address it however yeah, you want. Just to add a couple of things. Hold on. Yes, no. The trees, this isn't the main issue. Discuss this issue with the, uh, the pollutant that's coming out of the, out of the factory. Okay. The dust issue. That's that's a big problem also. That's the, that's the old building. The filter system was put in prior to the fans. Then the fan that made the fans louder, so that was what the, the silencers were for. But um, Carl, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the sound of the fan. I'm talking about the dust that comes out of that building. Yeah, yeah I mean, there is dust on the roof. I mean, I've seen pictures. And there's dust on our property also. All right. That's got to be addressed also. All right, Rick. Well, I'll, I'll let Rick address. Well, the, some the, of the dust points. issue, it's honestly the first thing really hearing about it. I have not looked into that, but I'll speak to Carl about it. But that's on the existing building. 
right uh, and not part of the conditional use which is yes it is part of the conditional use. use what i was focusing on conditional use item states applicant continue improvements to reducing noise and emissions from the blower dust collectors on existing oh, building sorry, at 102 life science drive okay. yeah so they were supposed to cut down on dust emissions okay. before. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, you know, I was aware that they had done work mm -hmm. with the silencers um, and filters, too. I thought, yeah, well, I thought they upgraded the, their filter system. The filter system. And I, I'm only remembering this from back then uh, when it happened. Um, but I'll, we'll, we'll look into that yeah, more. There were, the EPA, there were EPA inspections way back, but I yeah, didn't want to. Well, if the filters were installed after December 18, 2018, then that would fit the conditional use. If they have, if they have proof yeah. that they installed filters that are of you know greater filtering capacity than they previously had, those were installed after December 2018, then, then they nailed it. They got the conditional use for that, yeah. that aspect. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the, the dust issue. I mean, I mean, I, you know, as, as you mentioned, Mike, you know, we had, uh, William had put in, you know, the right to know request and we have responded with you know the traffic study, which by the way, you know, the traffic study was the prepared by the engineering firm of Riley and Associates per PennDOT specs. Mm -hmm. And I, when you and I spoke this afternoon on the phone, Bill, I had told you that we we were never provided with any updated HOPs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's why we, we said we're, we weren't in possession of it, but as I mentioned here, Carl is still working on trying to get that for you. Correct. Uh, that's we should have it in our records too. So. We'll see if there was any updated HOP done after that traffic study was issued. But mm -hmm. you saw what the traffic study showed, so. Yeah, I, uh, I did. Yep, I yeah. spoke to PennDOT today. Um, he's going to get it for me. They, they just file it anyway. It's a high, he did confirm it's a high use, uh, high use highway occupancy permit, which yeah. allows 3,000 and above. It's, mm -hmm. They don't have one that allows more cars than, than they got for life cycle. Yeah, so he's going to get it. Yeah, they got it, they got it. So this week or so, I'm going to get it. Yeah. 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 As Carl has represented I, at last month's meeting, and I believe some other times, but you know, he actually provided you with the decibel readings from, um, you know, pursuant to the ordinance, and I think that you acknowledge that you. you it's 65 day night average. Right. Um, fans only run maybe 10 hours a day, and the running capacity it's anywhere from low 50s to high 60s. So, without doing the math, I I don't think that they are over. That 65 day night average. I'll say that. Uh, I have a question, uh, kind of related to this, going, going back to the uh, the traffic and the, and the HOP. Uh, is there any update on uh, the grant that we got uh, through Slipco for upgrading Commerce Drive? Now it was like two million dollars. Yeah, we well going. we didn't get that. Ben, I got it. Okay. Uh, my. My understanding is they used it to, they didn't do a design for what they were going to do. They used that money and they put out a request for proposals for engineering companies to do their own design and come in and they would pick the design that they liked the best. Okay. Um, they have been back there doing some surveying and doing some marking, but I honestly don't know what they're going to do there because they, you know, they, they talked about doing from Life Science Drive all the way to 81. Now they're talking about getting up to Waverly Hills. So, you know, I well, uh, two million dollars of it. No one really the state works. They'll eat up all the money on engineering, which is and I think probably where we're at. But I didn't um, that they, the PennDOT actually requested that Riley revise the. <laughs> they did that in 2018 for us. It was revised in 2019 as part of that plan because they already had one penned out, asked them to re, to re, re look at it again to see if it needed a traffic light or a turn lane, and it was determined that it didn't. But that's why there's a revision date on it. They did that at penned out's request, and penned out didn't want to pay for it. So, you know, as to the, uh, the alleged tree line violation, I mean, and until we and I'm seeing these pictures for, for the first time tonight. Bill did provide us with a PowerPoint mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks ago, I think, mm -hmm. um, which was helpful, although they were just saying that there were pictures taken at different times over the last few years at different times throughout the year and at different angles. So mm -hmm. it was, it was kind of hard to compare apples with apples and 
this does a better job, I'll be honest, uh, mm -hmm. and the ones that you sent, um, uh, that, that you had also done. Maybe the initial ones. The initial ones, yeah. maybe, yeah. Right, right. So, you know, I, I, I think we still have to look at it. I think the original uh, opinion was that there was not a violation of that particular condition, mostly because uh, that any time there's, uh, when, and, and landscaping and buffering, one is required by the ordinance, two, it's often a condition that's imposed under conditional uses uh, for a lot of different projects. It's, it's very common. Uh, usually that doesn't come into play until after the project is completed. Uh, so they still have an opportunity to provide landscaping and buffers. So the specific argument, I, I, what I'm hearing, William, that you're making is, is that the existing tree line, and you know, I, we're gonna have to look a little closer at it. I'd probably like to go up and look at the property myself. And I'm just asking, is there an argument that the one on the left was taken in, did you say July of 22? It was taken, it was taken during the summer of 2022, I believe in June. Okay. Based off the PPL background activity when they rebuilt their power line. I thought one of your emails had one had it marked July, maybe. I'm no, right. no, it's, it's well, summer. Is, 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 is it possible that the one on the right is, was just taken, what, a week ago? I mean that it has Correct. that that, that the, the foliage hasn't matured yet, that a lot of the trees are just coming into bloom, that so it may look I, you I can clearly ask, tell you can ask. clearly tell in the right picture that I, there I is not a single tree standing out of the ground, dead, alive, I, I and there's nothing that. sticking oh, out of the ground that. compared to the picture not, on the I'm left. Not, and I can't get a close I'll get a close look at it later. But I can I, I see the void that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we we see it, we can see. And it. additionally, but it's, it's but thinned out are, as well. But but there are still going further to the right of the photo. There are still trees. So standing. so let let me ask you this: landscape buffers to be provided around the property. Existing tree line to be preserved as existing on east side below right. retention right. basin. That's right. Is that tree line preserved as existing right. below the retention basin? Right. I, I know what it's And I understand they can always plant trees, but one of the purposes why we wanted that buffer to remain intact is to protect us from the construction that's ongoing. So what you're saying is now we're going to have to wait until the building's no, finally no, put up no, no. before we get a buffer to protect no, us. No, I wasn't saying that. I said why we initially thought mm -hmm. that we didn't see a violation was because of that usually with these projects with landscape buffering, it's, it's, they, they wait till the end to do it. It's the last thing that they do, in other words. So, but no, but now that you're specifically pointing out the removal of that patch of trees, I think we you know, we'll have to take another look at it. Mr. Well, Not only the patch of trees I've got, the trees that they destroyed took out of the rest of the tree line and hurt the roots, and then there's gouges in the trees mm -hmm. where the machines ran up against them. Most of those trees are probably going to die. So, uh, it's not foliage that you're looking at. Really, and William explained to me about the, you know, the, the ditch, the drainage ditch is right. Well, I'm not saying about yeah. the property. Yeah. Yeah. The drainage okay, yeah. still, they won't well, be able to But there's some the trees that it's still existing. They're damaged. Uh, they're considerably damaged. Yeah, it looks to me like, I mean, I went up there and walked it. It looks like they just went right to the property line and they removed everything. Yeah, All correct vegetation, brush. There's nothing uh, right up to the property line. Um, and we should probably, you know, if those if those basins are too close to the, uh, probably something needs to be addressed now. Basins are now, exactly yes, where they were now. on the develop, land development plan and on the MPDS permit. Which was okay, provided they, they kept that tree line intact. Is, so it, is I, there enough room to, to put new trees no, in there? No, they have a drainage system. Some of the problem has to do with testimony at the hearing versus the way the condition was worded on the, on the conditional use. Um, the testimony at the hearing was that um, we'll maximize our preservation of existing trees within the buffer and that they'll replace trees with new ones in areas of low density. I have I have the exact testimony because the right. conditional I'm use here. The plan reading is supplement where there's not a density of existing trees. We wouldn't remove trees in order to put in new ones. 
we would maximize our preservation of existing trees within that buffer. This is the transfer. Would it remove that trees in order to put in new ones? This is the transfer. That's right. Just what I read. So, um, but then the when you guys made the motion, you said that they would preserve the existing tree line exactly as it is. Right. So, but I mean, it's. I mean, it would it would seem to me that it would have been to their benefit to keep the existing tree and shrubs there. The testimony was from December fourth. <coughs> just as, as Mr. Ferrero said, Tom Riley attested. He, he said at the the conditional use hearing on, on December 4th that we wouldn't remove trees in order to put in new ones. So even if the conditional use didn't exist, they still <coughs> promised us they were going to cut down trees. But then the conditional use was, was voted on and placed in action on December 18th where you know they agreed, the supervisors agreed, that the tree line was going to be preserved as existing. And clearly that, that's not what we got. I agree with that. I mean, it would have been to their to, benefit to they need to stop. maximize preserving what was there, and they just removed everything. So that just means that they're going to have to put more in that they wouldn't have if they had kept what was there. Uh, so, uh, also, like I said, part of the issue is, you know, I, I'd say, yeah, you know, have them put in, you know, new trees, you know, later on at the end of the project. But we're dealing with the consequences of the loss of these trees every single day they go up there and dig. Every single day, the noise, the sound. You know, this, this buffer was, was not just, the purpose of, this, of maintaining this buffer was not just for the existing structure. It was for the construction phase as well. And they're not gonna plant four foot high saplings. You know, if, 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 I lived in the, if we live in the perfect world, if, you know, what I, what I would like to see, but regardless of how not realistic it is, they stop construction, they, they transplant 20 foot tall mature trees in that tree line and then start construction again. That's the only way in my mind that, that we could have an apples to apples comparison to what we were originally promised. William, was the one on the left taken from the email you sent us? It, it looks to be similar. There's a bunch of similar pictures. I have a drone that, that I flew all summer. Yeah, but, but that particular picture, is that in the, can you, can you, can you send those to me? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it that way. I have other pictures too, um, yeah, longitudinal I, I pictures of the tree line, so you can see the, the thickness as well. Mm -hmm. The picture on the right, the trees, the two trees to the left of the hunting stand, are the tallest trees on that end. The picture on the left, you can still see those two trees. Yep. The area to the left of them, which is the area of the 200 feet where you said there was mm -hmm. more mature trees, there, those trees are significantly smaller than those two trees. I mean, that's when, when Brian and I went up there and walked it, that was where it was more of a brush row than trees. No, I mean, I was, so how, well, how tall are those two trees next to the hunting stand? So those, Two trees next to the hunting stand are probably about 35 feet tall. The trees to the left that you're pointing out, um, I estimate around 20 feet tall, given the fact that you could see the large uh, PPNL cherry pickers, the ones that are the size of fire trucks, um, you know, relatively close to those trees, and those trees tower over the top. Do you know what kind of trees they were, the ones that were removed? I have to do more of a, an in depth analysis. They're healthy trees. Bill, is that where the tree stand is now? Is that a, is that in an ash tree? Is, is that That's a way? dead tree. That that tree stand, uh, we purposely placed that in a dead dead tree for visibility. So that pink marker, that's where that tree stand is. It's a dead tree. I don't know if it's an ash tree. Um, you know, I, I even, think it was when I was up there looking. There was I had them all over my yard. I can tell just by the bark. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I think I think it's an ash, but. Um, well, what I would suggest is is that we will assure you we will continue to uh, is there anybody look at this. We've been continuing to look at it for seven seven weeks, though. I don't know what's... I'm not going to not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not, not, 
I have we haven't looked I haven't looked at this violation specifically. At all. I, I've sent you a lot of emails. Oh yes, I, I was aware. I was okay. aware, but now it's been now it's more focused and more specific, mm. and I'm hearing additional testimony. I guess I'll call it or evidence. So another thing, and we kind of you know we we work down from because you had and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that there were a lot of claims you had made that we kind of whittled down, right? Um, <coughs> And now we're, it seems to me this is the main focus, am I right? And correct me if I, the dust, the, the, the dust, right, Bill? Senior? Yes. That too, so those two things. Right. As of now, yes, those those right. two those two claims okay. are the main focus. Well, if good. they do provide evidence that they installed higher performance filters than the filters that they had originally, if, you know, they, they, had, they provided, if they installed filters that have um, a higher filtration capacity as compared to what they had previously, and those filters were installed after December 18th, 2022, and that claim goes away. Because I don't know how else you can objectify that they... And that's something you don't know unless you have an invoice or, or right. construction. Um, you know, so yeah, I, 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 I think I want to address with the uh, excavation here. The dust is horrible. Not, not just the, the tree lines, the way wind blows, and also, is there any way that you can get them to water? They have water yeah. drugs out there oh, every day. Yeah, no, I, I did. didn't soil and conservation they, remedy that? They got yeah. I did. Two, we, two, two days ago, did. it was like a, a they, desert storm. They've had a water truck up there every day. I've I, I have videos. I, mean, I got videos of I know the dust was terrible, and but they the, the last three times I was up there, there was water trucks, they're, they're showing up. Well, two days, two days ago, Carl, it was like there's a storm. Right. Well, they're blasting, you can't even see. You can't, you can't see through the dust. Especially with the I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was bad. They, the water yeah. truck. they have been using the water truck, mm -hmm. I can tell you that, because they're behind my house every morning, every two hours, filling up on the hydrant. From six o'clock in the morning, all the way through Saturday, Sunday, Monday, this morning, they're there. They are watering. I, was, I, was I don't know if they're that, watering the right spot, but they're watering. They're taking the water. They're bringing it up there. As far as this is concerned, Bill, I walked over there with you. I walked over and seen them. They definitely took down your trees. Something needs to be done with it. I agree with you 100%. What, what's the remedy? I don't know. I'm not a professional that way. But as you can see here, trees were taken down. Brush were taken down. And when I walked in, there was little trees at the end, little brushes at the end, and they just toppled over. I don't know where the property line is. You said it was the flag. So many things. Mm. It's not the flags. Where the dirt rolled over on the flag. Mm. But looking at this, something has to be done. You're right. Seven weeks is a long time. Construction still continues at this day. The dust is terrible, 100%. Uh, so I think we have to do something about it. No one's here from this company at all. They came to this meeting. They didn't have to come, Carl? No. Well, if they were levied fines, I'm sure they'd come to the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in the area. Mm -hmm. and I know if it was being done to me, I'd feel the same way. It has been done to me, but uh, I think we have to sit down, figure out what we're going to do with it, bring them in, <coughs> something, and get, get this taken care of. Whether, you know, if they have to bring in 20 foot trees, I've seen it done in Florida. That'd be fantastic. They, they can even put them on my property. But what I'm saying as long is as something has to be done. Whether we sit down with them and ask them about it, whatever. Something has to be done. Yeah. Okay. This isn't, you know, it's not right what happened. Mm -hmm. It was disregard for everything that they, you know, that they did over there. And let's see if we can do it soon because it's going to be a long summer. I, it, it won't be able to, to you know, I, I can't plan on the bar for you, though. I'm right, just telling you what yeah. my personal opinion going forward is. But you can only um, investigate so much and say, geez, they're wrong. Well, I, I don't think we're at an investigating stage right now. Yeah. I, I, I clearly see that where I fall. I clearly see that with these pictures. You can bring me pictures from three years ago. You can bring me pictures from two years ago. But you're showing me pictures from yesterday. But you know, some, some people here are saying, well, we'll, we'll investigate further. Well, and again, and it's something we have to do with this. Yeah, we, but... I don't know if we need to investigate. I think this looks like a violation here. Now the question is, what, to what, do about what is what is the best? What's the remedy method? for this? Twenty foot trees. So, um, 
It's funny you mention that because in the uh, <laughs> in the township zoning ordinance, section 506, it or section 507, penalties and remedies, it shall be unlawful to erect, construct, reconstruct, alter, or maintain, or use any building or structure, or to use any land in violation of the provisions of this ordinance or amendment. Yeah. Section 507, Scott Township Zoning Ordinance. What was that again? 507. And what's the penalty? It, it just states that they can't construct or use land if they're in violation. And it's clearly a violation. It I mean, sound, it would sound like what is what is the best enforcement method? Do we get compliance by shutting them down? Yeah. Or using yeah. the threat of shutting them down? No, it just shuts down. Uh, down. No. I, I Pol polar know. permit, like yeah. what I would do. Plan two trees, whether you want them to do it now or when they were going to do it. Yeah. You let me know. I'll talk to them. If you want them to do it now, they're in violation. Why don't we do this? Why don't uh, why don't we contact Riley and ask them how they're going to remedy this? What is their proposal? So, so I that, talked to the project that and other things is what I mean by when I say we will continue right. to investigate this. So, so when I say investigate, we're not looking to investigate whether what you're telling mm -hmm. us is true or not. It, it's it's to further verify and then look for what, how are we going to solve this it's and it's going to involve them so exactly what the gentlemen are saying mm -hmm. is what we intend to do i assure you right. i mean it, it, it is a clear violation um you know if i was in charge what i do is is i pull their permit until they show up and provide a remediation right. plan with a realistic timeline um in writing if they have an agreement a remediation yeah. And it, it's reviewed by the Planning Commission, it's voted on by the supervisors, and if it's a realistic remediation, then you give them their permit back with an ultimatum to plant the trees. I agree to that 100%. I do. I, They're I, in I, violation I know, of the permits. They're in violation. Permits are, are real mean, deals. At this point, Ryan and I don't have any, any power to enforce anything. Mm -hmm. We approved it, and Carl is the enforcement officer and the zoning officer. He would have that authority to shut the project down. Something has to be uh, done, Carl. But yeah, but Mike, aren't you supposed to instruct him that the job be done? I mean, really, you wouldn't like it in your backyard. Just pull the permit, and why isn't somebody here? We're not the, yeah. we're why not the zoning officer. Why isn't somebody here from the company? Were they told not to show up? I would like to have seen them here well, so we could whether the engineer or somebody from the company will be, because they need to address this. Um, we were supposed to have a meeting about this last week on Thursday. All parties were to be present so we could sit down and have an intelligent discussion about what we're going to do moving forward. And, you know, that meeting was canceled last minute, the 11th hour. Here we are bringing this up at a regular supervisor meeting, holding everybody up. We didn't have all the documents that we do right now, so it wouldn't have been as a fruitful uh, conversation without those documents that we have here now. We would have been talking about everything. The highway occupancy permit, the traffic light, uh, noise, but you know we kind of eliminated them uh, because of the documentation we got. So we're kind of, it's kind of better that we didn't have the meeting Thursday and that we're here tonight and we narrowed and, down the issue. As I said, two. we are now focused on these remaining two oh, items and we'll, we'll, we'll address it. I just have a question. Is this up to Carl to, to deal with the permit part of it? Yes. So you have the power to pull their permit if they're in direct violation of the your unconditional use? Power. Do you, you have the right to do that? I do, and it would I guarantee you it would last about 15 minutes before we ended up in court. So we're It doesn't off. matter. Well, it's so I understand it, but we're, you're talking about thousands of dollars, and if we can work something out, you're much <laughs> better off doing that. Right. They, yeah, they, they will not. This is a multi-million dollar project. Right. I could shut them down for about 20 minutes before we ended up downtown. Well, what, what, what does it seem to be you guys 
You two guys are afraid of Slipko. This has nothing to do with Slipko. Oh, Slipko, whoever's on this project. Slipko has nothing to do with this project. That's, that's in it. Well, whoever's on this project, what do you guys and that's not fair. Really, it's not a fair statement. What do you mean it's not a fair statement? It's not a fair well, statement whoever, that you're so fine, we're afraid of something. They called out the wrong people. This but, it seems but like we're protecting them more than the citizens. We have our obligation, Mr. Novak. No, I understand you have an obligation. You have an obligation to us also. All residents fairly. All residents. They're a resident like you're a resident. Right, but we're, they're in violation. We're not. We're never, enforcement is never that cut and dry. I am not saying they're not in violation. Don't take it the wrong way. But it's never that cut and dry. As Carl mentioned, there are, are consequences. And we will continue to look at it. That but we, I give seven you Seven weeks I've gone by. Work. Seven weeks. No. Yes, yeah, seven not weeks. Seven weeks. Since no. they did that, it's been no. seven weeks. Yes. April 4th is when they cut down those yeah. trees. They've right. been in violation. Carl weeks. was up there that day. I called that him. That day, Carl was there. Carl was aware of this seven weeks ago. We will continue to try to <clears throat> get a resolution for you. That's our goal. Our goal is to. I'm, I'm done waiting. I am. I'm done. Okay, okay. I don't know what else to tell you. Well, Carl, are you going to take any action immediately? No. You're, you're the zoning officer. What are you going to do? Well, I can't say it. No, really, I'm serious. What are you going to do? We're going to continue to look at it, ma'am. Yeah. You're not going to pull their permit because <coughs> they're in cannot, violation. They're in violation of a conditional use. Not. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. And you're not going to pull their permit. Are you going on record saying that, that no, you're not going to do that? No. I mean, are you going on record? And the one way you have to look at the permits pulled, everything gets shut down. And there's no, there's not going to be a resolution here for months. Well, once we get in, they're, they're they should have went by the rules. Set. They should have played uh, by the rules. So, you know, I mean, I'm just speaking as a lawyer here, not as a supervisor. But once that's done, uh, then everything shuts down. Uh, they'll be fighting in court over for. But months you're not months, the only months. lawyer in the room either, Mike. I, I'm just. So just, what? What could happen? My is perspective. So, do we do that, and this gets dragged out for months and months? Or do we use the threat of shutting them down to get action? A threat isn't going to mean anything to them. They're going to get up the next morning and they're going to continue construction just like they do every day. A threat, they, they don't listen well, to threats. I mean, they I'm listen to action. Action. you got to pull I, I the permit. I can if, if the permit's pulled, everything gets shut down. That's okay. And it's not resolved for months and months and months. That, well, that that's okay because they're in violation. That's why we have rules. What's your, ultimate goal? What's your ultimate goal here? A resolution or just to... Like, you know, well, once the permit's pulled, maybe they'll sit down with us. We're willing to sit down with them. But in the meantime, you have to pull the permit. In well, the meantime. Uh, and we will sit down and we will talk. But things have to halt until there's a resolution. They have to halt until there's a resident. They cannot be allowed to violate their conditional use permit. They cannot be allowed to operate when they're in violation of the permit that was given to them. That's why you give people permits, so that they stay in line and they follow the rules. We built a house in the township 35 years ago. We went with our zoning permit. We didn't, we didn't violate that, and if we did, we would have been fined and we would have been shut down. They are no better than us. They are no better than us. They are constructing in a township that, that we live in, and we abide by the rules, they should too. And if they're in violation, they have to have their permit pulled until we sit down and make a resolution. That's what we have to do, come on. These no. people all live in the township. Everybody cares about this township. And when you break the rules, you have to abide by them. And you have to enforce the rules. Carl, you're the, you're the, the zoning officer, and that's why we have you here. That's why you're here. I can't pull it. You can. So we're literally being told that they are too big to shut down. Nope. No. They're, they're, no. Well, that's what Nobody you're saying. It's that. a million-dollar project. Said I said it's a, a multi-million-dollar project, which they're not going to walk away from. So, yeah. I so, pull their permit for, you know, the day they pull a permit, they've already they're... agreed to replace the trees. So How is that going to help us now? Well, it's not, but what 
exactly what other resolution are we going to get at this point? They're in violation of their conditional use. That's yes, a they big are. deal. They're in violation. And you all agreed. You all sat there and agreed. So it's simple. They're in violation of their permit. It gets pulled. That's why you and give them a permit. It gets what, pulled. What if they say, fine, we're shutting the project down, or we're going to court, and we're fighting this for 10 months, and nothing gets resolved? Well, they need to sit down if they want to continue, they then they better sit down, down and come up with a say, resolution. We're not talking to you. We're going to court, and we're going to court. Are you afraid of court? I'm not. Are you afraid? Don't be afraid of court. No. Attorney There's fees should be pretty good cheap. Out of court. Don't be afraid. No, I'm just saying, I know how it will drag out. Uh, it, you know, and if you get in a, a, a war mode with both sides. No, then court doesn't out. create any war. It, it does resolve a lot of matters. Court will dis it would resolve it if they can't come up with a resolution. That's why you have the court system. Well, I mean, Brian and I, we don't have the power to shut the project down because we're not. Carl does. Only Carl's our zoning officer. Office. Do the right thing, Carl. So, Do the right thing. Carl has to use his discretion yes, he is. with no, legal advice from Rick. No, uh, you know, what is the best? What is the best way to get yeah. compliance? All right, Mike. Uh, if we get together with these people and, and get, get the promise, get it in writing. But they got to pull it, though. They're only going no, to no, get the, together if they pull it. They're going to have to get the pull it. They are. Carl has the authority He's, to do they're, they're, they're not going to do it. But they're, they're That's his job. What if, what but, if, you but, if, what if we were to contact the engineer? We want, we want another meeting with you. So we, want, we, want, we want to know what you guys are going to do to fix this. Could uh, Mr. Kelly speak to me? Who? Mr. Kelly. You can identify yourself. Gene Kelly. I'm, I'm oh, all right. An attorney here with the Novaks. And, and I think that, you know, I think for, obviously there's a lot of frustration in the room, particularly from our end here. I think Rick made a really good point. I think Carl's making a really good point. I think all of you guys, the points are well taken, which is number one, Rick, I do think that you should take a look at this. Um, I think everybody should. We appreciate that you guys have already been out there. Number two, you know, I don't think a protracted court battle with Colmar would be who of anyone. Not them, not the township, not the Novax. But I do think that getting a little bit of momentum out of Colmar and just as Bill pointed out, getting some actual plans for remediation here. And, and Carl, you said they've already agreed to replace the trees. Uh, if that's the case, I think that it would really go a long way with the family Ed and all of the township if we can actually see some momentum on that and see some steps that, to move forward. Um, you know, it, it's Again, the frustration is here, and I think that what I'm hearing is that we need our trees replaced because we don't want our little kids breathing in dust and seeing a big, huge eyesore on our 67 acres. So, you know, you guys have already acknowledged that it's an issue, and what are we going to do to move forward, and how are we best going to do that in a way that's not total all-out war, uh, you know, which would be meaningless, I think. That's our goal, Gene. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that is absolutely 100% our goal. And let me make it clear. No one here tonight said we will not issue an enforcement notice. That it, The point is it's not happening tomorrow morning until we look at this closer, until we talk to them. Issuing an enforcement notice is definitely not out of the question, but only after we're, he's, he's the guy, he's the only guy that needs to be satisfied and you know I guess lesser me to make sure that we're legally sound in doing it. So uh, but thank you. I, we, that is our goal. Everything you said. Is, is there any way that some sort of temporary buffer could be put up in the meantime until they can plant trees? I mean I, I live across the street from this construction. So and I work from home. So I see the dust flowing down from the construction whether they want it or not all day to their property. Incredible amounts. What would you propose? Um, excuse me. What would you propose? I don't know. I'm not an engineer, I'm but normal. but they're but obviously if it's broken the conditional use and they're dealing with this planting trees at the end of the construction is not helping them. You know. We'll look at all options. 
The, the other thing, we had a, a water test about seven weeks ago and haven't gotten results back. Is there any update on that? I can check it. You guys got your back, didn't you? I called them twice and I still haven't gotten any okay, results. Let me check Yes, it, that's I'll all I'm I'll call a company that did it. I'm sure they have them back. All right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Bill, William, thank you for the, uh, you know, the presentation. So, mm -hmm. as I said last month, it was impressive and it definitely helps. So, no, got okay. you. We Those come. two pictures. You will send you those to me. Right Wait. There. You'll send those to me. Absolutely. Um, you know, maybe within the week we can have Homer and possibly Riley sit down so we could discuss this. Maybe if they were they were served some kind of, not necessarily a fine or immediately shut down, handed something that says, hey, you're in violation, you need to come talk to us. Um, and then have them sit down and we can talk about, you know, what is, is realistic in terms of a timeline for replacing these trees. Like, I, I just want to see movement on this. I, I want to see them here. I want to be able to speak to them. So, um, that is part of the plan. But we do acknowledge so it's a violation. Though. Everybody is, is clear that they're in violation of their conditional use. Supervisors indicated that. Yep. Okay. No doubt. Yep. It's going to be in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> I hate being in the paper. <laughs> Supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's clear. It's black and white. There's there's no other way I could I could possibly convey this. Okay. It's a violation. So Carl, could you do anything as a zoning officer, being okay. that they're in violation? Can you do? What can you do? What was that? The work. Okay, but what what specifically can you I'm do? Not with that? Any well, I mean, it sounds like either Carl or Rick is going to be in contact with the engineer, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to relay to them that we feel this is a violation here. It needs to be addressed. But is there some kind of penalty that you can impose to get them on the ball? No, not at this time. We can't. We don't have the power to impose a penalty. Yes, they, you do. They're in violation. Yeah, only, they are. Only a. a court can impose a violation. No, it says a zoning officer right within the Scott Township zoning ordinance that the zoning officer is to issue written notice. Right. 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 Yep, or, there's a little more has been, William, but when, when written done. notice of a violation of any of the provisions of this ordinance has been served by the zoning officer on the owner, mm -hmm. occupant and or contractor, such violation shall be discontinued immediately. Section 506. He does not have the power to impose fines. Yes, he does. Fines. We'll serve them a violation. Hold their permit. Do something. <coughs> Even if it's temporary. I mean, I don't, just to, to have them sit down and discuss this. I, I, I think that we decided, or not we, but uh, Carl and Rick want to speak with them first uh, and see if we can if we can get them amenable to resolving this. If they don't, then ultimately Carl does have that power to, to uh, issue a citation and then but let's see how they make out in the next few days. I'd like to have a response within a week. Okay. I, I'm sure they can get the hold of somebody to speak to tell them that the board's position we think there's a violation and this needs to be straightened out and uh, what is your proposal to do it? With us ultimately having the authority to shut the project down through Carl. Rose. Um, I, I, I didn't bring the book with me, but if I remember of all, over the, all the years that you can follow the fine. There are magistrates, and if you all remember poor Brad Green, He's using the magistrate to put the dog poop the wrong way. He's fined, and it, it was it was just un unbelievable. So step I mean, one is step one is you get cited. Then it has to go into the judicial system, whether it's a magistrate or the court of common pleas, and they have to have hearings and they take testimony, and then the court eventually decides whether or not there's a violation and whether or not there would be a fine. That takes a long time. Um, whether it's someone that's not hooking up to their sewer or any other kind of a zoning uh, issue, 
those cases will drag on for a year, a year and a half by, by the time they're finally resolved. So that's what I'm saying, there has to be a balance here. I don't want to see us <coughs> wasting a year before we can get a resolution. Well, Billy just read the, the rule. If they're in violation, the zoning officer has an obligation to follow that rule that Billy just read. If they're in violation, the zoning officer is to do that part. He has the, but he has the discretion to decide to decide how do you get to that end point. Do I bring the hammer down on them immediately or do I contact them and say well, this is a violation, this needs to be rectified and what is your proposal? Well, you're, you're not here to make friends, you're here to, to, to impose the rules. You know, like, I mean, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to be friends with these people, but you are obligated when they're in violation of that conditional use. Billy just read what the next step is. And, and, well, you, you know, know that, what it is that there's, that's the not family. to say that that might not happen, but it's always better to give them a chance to correct it. We now weren't given a chance. That, uh, you know, to preserve those trees. I had my trees. ninth hearing this week on a single citation. I what was that, Carl? I went to the ninth hearing on a single citation this week. Right, but, okay, but you need to impose what you need to impose on these people. My point is, though, that this one citation has been wrapped up for a year and a half. Do you want me to do it and try to I get want it you to do, do it you now. Want me to just issue a citation and we'll be here a year and a half. Right? But, but no, you need to do something now because they aren't, aren't, aren't going to listen until you impose something on them, something with the, with, the, with the violation on this conditional use permit. They're in violation, and you need to give them something in writing to tell them. I mean, we need something in writing so that they know that we mean business. And that you mean business, Carl. You're the zoning officer. We count on you. You know, we really do. We count on you to enforce the zoning laws in this township. We count on you. I, I said it multiple times tonight, so we will do it. Guys, we go around and around circles. So like Billy says, take, take a week and see if you get the ball moving. See what, what happens. And uh, we'll leave it at that right now. Thank you. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. With the understanding that we always have that power, or Carl always had that power. We're not getting anywhere with him then. Well, the I understand you got to give him a chance, but you just got to get to him now. And, but uh, but we, we want to see this fixed. Yeah. So what's the best way to get to there? Yeah. So that's... And any other issue there? Okay, thanks, guys. Um, all right. Uh, Rick, do you have any other legal matters? No. All right. Uh, there's no correspondence that needs to be addressed by the board. We'll move on to motions. Uh, we need a motion to pay the June payroll. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need a motion to pay the general fund and state fund bills as presented. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we need a motion to approve the financial reports as presented. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we need a motion to reapprove the Hoyne Act lot consolidation as presented. I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we need a, a motion to accept the bid and enter into an agreement of sale with Al Gawari for purchase of the township garage property at 997 Lakeland Drive, Scott Township, PA. Amount of bid $172,100. Uh, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we need a motion to approve the lot line adjustment of ECA slash Chrysler slash Ferraro as presented. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Last order of business is public comment. Is there any general public comment on other things that we haven't already discussed here? Rose. Okay. Um, Carl just made the statement that he went to his ninth hearing. Now, to refer to the public comment from last month, I specifically asked if there are any pending magistrate hearings that were coming up. And he said no. It wasn't so, my citation. It was Dave Lamoureux from KBA. What's that? It wasn't written by me. It was written by Dave Lamoureux at KBA. I was a witness. Uh, well, that's not the way you made it sound. You said you had the ninth hearing. It was a ninth hearing. But so so do, you, do you as the zoning person have 
any magistrate pending hearings right now? I do not. You do not. Except for the 45 days when that one comes up again, if it still continues. What is the status, any status on the land bank uh, situation? I'm not aware of anything coming before us. Uh, and what is the status on the um, legal matter in court on the apartments on 347? The briefing schedule has been set by the court. The Justice Development's brief is due this Friday. Ours is due 30 days thereafter. And um, the court has scheduled an argument for um, August. August before Judge Julia Munley. <clears throat> um, I think August 1st. What time? Uh, not sure of that. Not, probably 9.30, but I, I, I'll clarify that. And so is that in Julia Munley's court Judge room? Julia Munley, yeah. She's in the government center. Yeah. What's that? She's in the government. She's in the center. county building. She's Governments. not in the actual courthouse. Right, I know. They moved across the third down the street there. Okay, going back to that uh, meeting that was scheduled May the 18th, that was supposed to address this matter uh, on Colmore. Uh, first of all, it wasn't even, wouldn't have even been a proper meeting because it was run the same day, May 18th. But it was canceled, really. Well, how can you cancel something that didn't even really exist? Wasn't even properly held. That's meeting. why it was canceled. Yeah, well, we should have so it. so we, more money that was spent. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, there was more money that was spent. It's always easy to spend other people's money, taxpayer money. Uh, can you tell me now, going on the site, that township site? Uh, it says that the office hours are 9 to 4, Monday to Friday. On the door, it says 10 to 4. What is it? And when were, when was it changed? Well, it changed when it off a couple of days. We changed the sign and we didn't change it back. So what, what is the, is it 9, nine to 4? If I'm off, we put a 10 to 4 sign because I... That's when Diane comes in. Diane's only part-time. So is it 9 to 4 or 10 to 4? Well, how come in maybe a few weeks back I came, it was 10 after 10, and there was nobody there? I don't know. You were here the other morning at quarter after 9, and I was there. No, I wasn't here quarter after 9. I was here at uh, 10 to 10. Oh. Yeah. And Diane came in at 10 after 10. I was here. So, so they are 94. You talked about the recycling of electronics. There's nothing on the, on the website about that in May. Mike, you said that you don't have to post it. Well, here, Act 65 said meeting agenda must be posted at both the location of the meeting and the principal office of the public agency. So it must be posted, and it's not. It was in the office? Yeah. It's posted where in the office? On the count. It's supposed to be posted for the public. If there's nobody there to open the door and the dog is jumping up and down. You were there yesterday. It was sitting on the counter right in front of you. When you were there yesterday morning, it was on the counter in front of you. Doesn't matter. It's supposed to be posted. Is it posted out here? It's not. It's not. So I, I, I don't understand why you just don't follow, follow what, what's supposed to be as far as the rules and the regulations. Anything else? Yeah, I want to know uh, the KOZ zones. Uh, are there terms, their tenure terms up there? Do you know what the terms are? I, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. Do we have a, a log, a list? We would have we would have documentation showing when it when it expired, when it was approved. Anything else, Rose? Yes, I'm reading my notes. I'm not 35 like you, Mike. 
Thirty-five. I'm revising it downward. <laughs> So, could you tell me what is the uh, status of now, from what I see, we have a, another business on Grandview Road. It's an, uh, looks like it's a vehicle business. It's like a concrete business. So, if the road gets broken down, now the taxpayers have to uh, pay for that road. Nobody, you know, everybody just like put your head in the sand. Because if they, they should be, you should be getting prepared because your school tax proposal is going up and it's going to be going up to 129.77 as far as millage. <coughs> so Mike, so you're not going to, you're not going to follow and have the uh, agenda posted 24 hours outside so that I, I don't think I don't it should be uh, I don't have a problem with it you know, whether it's stuck on the door but it was posted but I think it's more convenient to have it in the hallway uh, if someone's just passing through uh, and you don't have to go into the office to see it yeah so I mean no, I, I, that's what I don't I don't have a problem with that I, I that's fine so is that going to be is it finally going to follow the Sunshine Act well, I'm not conceding that it's not being followed, but I would have a, I would not have a problem with the name posted on the door here. Well, it's not being followed because there's nothing out there. There's nothing at the other door. And we couldn't find anything until like 5 o'clock this afternoon on the website. And it's not, it's confusing if people look to see what the hours are, and it tells you here 9 o'clock, and you come on the sign that says 10 o'clock. Well, I, as I said, I... I don't have a problem with it. I think it should be posted on the door and that should remedy any situation in the future. Does anyone else have anything else? Well, Rose checks her notes. Right. I'll give you some time to look. Yeah. Anybody you may, else? You may be 35 by the time she checks her notes. What's that? <laughs> Mike will be turning 35 by the time you judge. Okay. What's the status of uh, the Dennis case? Is that still going on? Well, I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't even know if it's still active. Well, could you find out? Involving the township or the sewer authority. I, I believe that they had an action against the township. I haven't seen anything new come in on it, so uh, it's probably dormant. We'll have to, you know, we'll, we'll look into it. Are you going to post information about the uh, electronic recycling that I believe is supposed to be made the 27th? I post it all the time on the Scott Township Facebook page, along well, with my pictures the official, of sunsets. That's not the official. I've had it up numerous times. And there are also flyers in the office if you want to stop in for a paper copy. Um, everything is accepted, uh, what the fees are for the various items and what free. Well, it should be there so that you know it's more available. People can't keep running down here and then it's just confusing what what your hours are. Does anybody have anything else? Doug. <laughs> All right. Uh, if nobody has anything further, then uh, a motion's in order to uh, adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Thanks. Aye. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.